Oh, I'm Tomoko Yamanashi from Nikkei Seki Japan, first of all, I'd like to thank you for inviting me here and giving me this great opportunity. Today, I'd like to make a presentation about uh, our struggle to design next generation building using ICT. Before going into today's main topic, it's a very rare case, so I'd like to explain what is Nikkei Seki, which I like for a little bit. Nikkei Seke is one of the biggest multidiscipline architecture design firm, having more than 2,700 employees now. But design field is not limited in architecture design, but also, we are also very active in a wide range of the fields such as structural engineering, MEP, urban design, and the civil engineering also. But design, um, now I'm a uh, principal architect of Nikkei Seke. Originally, we were really a domestic-oriented company, but in the last 20 years, we have tried to expand our work field in the global market. Recently, we are trying to accelerate such trends. In 2016, we won the renewal design competition of Camp Nou in Barcelona, the home ground of the football club of Barcelona. If you are a football maniac, you may know it. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not a football maniac, so. I didn't know exactly. So now we are going to the main, today's main topic. Today I'd like to talk about the influence of ICT on the next generation building. And my basic understanding of the present age is quite simple. A ICT is changing the way of the making things. Recently, many people point out that the fourth wave of industrialization has come. And the main player here is ICT information and communication technology based on computer. The German government named this fourth wave of industrialization Industry 4.0 and advocates to set it as a national policy. In my opinion, Industry 4.0 happens not only inside the world of the industrial products, but also happens inside many kinds of the manufacturing situations. Building business, our business is not an exception. I convinced that now it's a time for architects to think about Industry 4.0 in architectural design field. If you look out, if you look our building design business carefully, you will soon realize that some changes has already begun, and I think we can categorize them into six types: computer simulations, computational design, digital fabrication. Internet of Buildings, it's a very, very brand new world, but it's an architectural design version of IoT, Building Information Model, and Artificial Intelligence in Architectural Design Fields. Some of these has already begun, and some are just start be, being started. Because of the time limitation, I can't explain one by one here today, but I can say that these are real innovations. So from now on, I'd like to introduce how my design team has used the changes and innovation caused by ICT in our actual practical works. The first work is Mokuzai Kaikan, which means the headquarters of the Lumber Wholesaler Association. The main purpose of this project was to revive usage of wood and lumber in urban big scale buildings. This is the main elevation of the Mokuzai Kaikan. Before this building, all the architects and clients in Japan believed that wood was too flammable for large-scale building to be used. On the other hand, even now, Japanese people still love to use the lumber when they build their own house and are proud of their, our long history of wooden architecture. After some struggle, our concept was accepted by the client. I'm a very lucky man. But how to realize was another problem. There is two big problems appears in front of us. The first one, first problem was how we can get the building permission from the city government. Our way is to prove that this building is safe enough even in case of fire. 
through the, uh, even though we used the flammable lumber was used. A lot of the computer simulation related with the smoke and the temperature were needed, but as you guess, we had a beam, so we could use it as an, and make a lot of trials, errors, simulations. Finally, we could get the building permission. But the problem was the construction cost, as you guess. Lumber itself is not so expensive, but the processing cost of the lumber is very expensive in Japan because of the lack of skilled carpenters. Talking about the average cost of the lumber in building business in Japan, 30% is material cost and the other 70% is processing cost. So key of the solution is to reduce the processing cost. And I try to employ CNC, computer numeric controlled cutting machine, to process all the lumber here. CNC cutting machine can process 100 times faster than human beings. The fact, this fact means that we may be able to reduce the processing cost one to 1% 1 to original processing cost. If the process, processing cost becomes 1% of the original cost, the total lumber cost will be 30.7%, almost be one third of original lumber cost. Not only for, only for cost, but also for the revival of an old elaborate wooden joint system, employing a CNC machine had great meanings. Several hundred years ago, we Japanese invented a very elaborated wooden joint system called Okake Daisentsugi. It's a very long name, so don't need to remember. <laughs> this joint works against compression, stress, and moment without using any glue. It is really a smart joint system, but difficult to make it. Because lumber has to be cut complicatedly and precisely, it's really very difficult for human beings to make it. Even if you are very talented carpenter, it would take 15 to 30 minutes to make each joint. So it would be very expensive, as you guess. This is a little bit extreme example, but we tend to encounter with the same kind of the problems when we try to build the large scale buildings with the lumber in Japan. And many architects have given up to try. But here in Mokuzai Kaikan, because of the employing CNC machines, we succeed to reduce the construction cost drastically. And we succeed to build the wooden office building reasonably with the help of digital fabrication. Now you are up. You see it. Since after the completion, many people have visited this work and some of them have talked to me like this. I love this work very much because I can feel the elaborated handworks of carpenters here. No, but as I explained here, there is no handworks, but elaborated works of digital fabrication here. The next work is the Hoki Museum, which I designed for super realistic paintings. Here I'd like to explain how powerful BIM BIM is when you should control compl complex shapes. For your better understanding of this project, I prepared a short movie today, so watch this first. Also characteristic point of this project is a very large cantilever volume like this. I'm sorry, because of the copyright, I can uh, show you the sound today. So it's uh, very quiet. It looks boring a little bit. In Japan, it's OK, but uh, here, it's exhibit. OK, skip it. At a glance, it looks a very design-oriented work and complicated, but if you look at it very carefully, 
you will soon realize this museum are composed only with the necessary function as a museum, I mean galleries. There is no architectural feature such as large void spaces or certain accesses, just the stacking of the tubes, galleries. To make a seamless to to make a seamless space suitable for super realistic paintings, I wanted to erase the old joint from the interior space. So we decided to use the steel panels and weld them together and make the continuous structure like a ship. But the problem was the cost of the such a steel panel structure would be three times expensive comparing to those of normal buildings. Usually each of the structure cost and the interior co finishing cost and the exterior cladding cost and the MEB cost occupied 20% of the total construction cost. But here, only structural cost would exceed 70% of the total construction budget. The st structure of Hockey Museum was a sandwich structure with a two steel outer and the inner plate and the sandwich the steel eye beams in between. I mean, it means that the steel structure itself can work as the inner interior wall and the outer exterior walls. Also, the space between inner and outer steel panel can be used as an air duct. So I can say this structure system looks very expensive only as a structure. But if you use it not only as a structure, but also use it as an interior finish or exterior cladding, and the air duct at the same time. This system is quite reasonable. To handle this complicated shape which has ambiguous boundary between the structure and MEP, BIM is so powerful. Also to solve the problems during the design process, trials and errors in the computer's virtual world, I mean the computer simulation using BIM was so powerful. As you see, the shape is composed with the stacking of the tools, but it is really difficult to handle with a conventional 2D drawing system. But in a beam, you can handle it as it is. I mean, just the stacking of the curved tubes. Now things have become simple and easy to handle because of the ICT improvement. In the first gallery, I try to take in the natural light as much as possible, as this photo shows. But getting the good balance of the natural light and the artificial light is usually very, very difficult, only with the intuition. But here, trials and, trials and error with the computer simulation using Beam were really helpful and powerful, and I satisfied with the result. The next project is uh, Sony City Osaki, a research and development oriented office of Sony Corporation. In this project, we try to cool down the building itself using the rainwater to reduce the heat island phenomenon. I like to introduce it as an early days example of the internet of the buildings. This is the main facade of the Sony City Osaki building. The most characteristic point of this facade is employing the balconies as an emergency escape route. The main concept of this building is to design most safety around the center to ease the stress of the researchers working inside here. In addition to that, I try to use the handrails of the balconies as a sustainable design element. Through the ages, we Asian has invented many techniques to cool our environment using the heat of evaporation with the water. This ceramic pot is one of those examples. If you pour a drinkable water inside this pot, the water penetrates the surface of it, appears on the surface of the pot, and starts to evaporate. During this simple process, the heat of evaporation absorbs a large amount of the energy in the ceramic pot and the water inside is cooled down drastically. To uh, adapt to this uh, phenomenon to the building, we decide to make the handrail with the ceramic pipes and flow the preserved rainwater in sunny days. 
So we made a sim very simple mock-up and confirmed that the surface temperature of the ceramic pipe went down more than 12 degrees Celsius only with the effect of the heat of evaporation of the rainwater. The photo on the left is the thermal camera view of the ceramic pipe mock-up. The photo on the right is the thermal camera view of the another mock-up made of the same size aluminum pipes. Comparing those two mock-ups, we realize not only the pipes themselves, but also the air around the ceramic pipe were cooled down more than three degrees Celsius. What kind of the thing will happen if we apply this system to 140 meter by 140 meter size big scale facade? It is a little bit large to make a mock-up. We are so poor. So, and now it's a time for computer simulations. And this is it. The simulation says the air cooled down with uh, this brand new but based on primitive system would surround the building itself. As a result of the simulation, we found we would be able to cool down the surface of the building more than 10 degrees Celsius only with the temperature, only with the rainwater. We named this biomimic system Bioskin because of this system as composed with the water, ceramic and, ceramic and pipes. When we asked the normal facade manufacturer, they reject it. So I asked to make it as a, to the sanitary wear factory to make it. They accept. They are very good. They did a very good work. Here, as these drawings shows, all the drawings were made by Beam Software. This is a close shot of the bioskin. To realize the maximum usage of the rainwater, we installed the some sensing device on the bioskin, monitor the, the wet condition of it, control it via the internet, and find the reasonable pattern of the operation. As a result of the effect of the bioskin, the whole building is cooled down drastically only with the rainwater at this photo shot. The next project is the Toho School of Music. It may sound strange, but most of music school facilities look like a jail. This is because concrete is the cheapest material to make the sound isolated rooms. So in addition to that thick concrete wall between lesson rooms are usually used as structures. Usually, uh, the chart all the shows, architect decides the shape first and divide the internal space into small pieces and uh, putting the central corridor in it so it looks like a jail. So I take the new scheme on the right. In sectional planning, usually same type structure system tend to be stuck up. As a result of that, it becomes impossible to keep the spacious room for students to relax between hard lessons. So in this project, we like to keep the facility lower, hold the spacious room on the ground floor as a campus. We located the lesson room on the second floor for the student to access easily and the largest ensemble room in the basement because of use, usage of the soil around the building as a cheap pest and effective sound insulation. And between the each rooms, we insert the void space as a corridor, sunken garden, and the courtyard to improve the condition of the sound, sound insulation, natural light, and natural ventilation. To realize this configuration, the second floor and the basement floor should employ box frame structure system based on each own different heterogeneous grid system. As a first step, the large ensemble room are placed in the basement as this gray box shows. The next step is to place the lesson rooms in the second floor as these red box shows. The third step is to place uh, columns on the first floor at the intersectional point of the second floor walls and the basement floor walls. 
In the next press, we need to change the widths of the corridors to adjust the all the span of the clumps suitable. But this process is a little bit hard work only for human beings, so we rely on computational design way to optimize the widths of the corridors. And to check the design result in BIM, we often use the virtual reality system. It looks silly, but it's really effective. This is the result. It looks very complicated, but a huge quantity of the feedback and adjustment may generate a meaningful and natural complexity, which we can see in the old bridges landscape. As I explained now, this project is typical computational driven design, but I think we can see the new kind of the possibility of sustainable design here. For your better understanding of this work today, I prepared a short movie. Please watch this. This is ground four. As you see, it's composed with um, purity like a space. Now she's going up to the second floor. Staircase always like uh, the lighting well. Now she's arriving the second floor. Like this, the scape in the corridor look like a townscape. It's a very human, look like a human taste, but it's composed or I should say generated by computer. I like this kind of way very much. Some people dislike using, using the computer because the result could be a kind of the robot-like space, but <laughs> it's a silly. If you use the computational design way it's very carefully, you can get a very nice result like this. Now she's going down to the basement floor. With the help of the sunken garden, you can feel the natural light like this. Through the movie, it's very difficult to tell the natural ventilation, but uh, if you visit this facility, you can feel the na very natural wind flow in the corridor. Now she's going back to the ground floor. Both second floor and the basement floor is box framed structure, but uh, in between ground floor, it looks like a purity like a space. Usually it's very difficult to achieve, but with the help of the computer simulation, we succeed to make it. Okay. So today I pointed out that six big changes have been caused in architectural design by ICT. These, they are these six. And these changes not to happen only in, inside our businesses. On the contrary, it seems that pre precise understanding the situation that these six changes are phenomenon of Industry 4.0 in architectural design field. Anyway, I have a strongly, I have strongly felt ICT have changed the making things all over the world. I convinced that same situation must be happening in architectural design field in the near future. So today I can't talk about education, but uh, through my presentation, I want you to feel we need a new education system to adapt to this kind of design way. This is the end of my presentation. Thank you very much.